It's nice to see you and to welcome all of you to morning worship in Lawson Memorial on National Giving Day, when we're being asked to give what we can to help ensure our church's future. If you're a visitor or returning after a break, you should know we're really happy you are here because we enjoy meeting visitors and old friends. We hope you enjoy your time with us. And after the service, everybody is invited across to the hall for a cup of tea or coffee and a large slice of Lawson hospitality. We're also happy to see the youngsters joining us for the early part of the service. Any young visitors are invited to go across to the hall with the other youngsters to share in the fun of Sunday school or to join with teen scene. And there's a creche for those under three in the small hall where the youngest ones may be left in safe hands at any time during the service. We were waiting for her but I'm still going to say there's a very special welcome this morning for a beautiful young lady uh, who's coming shortly into the front pew, Lexi Andrina Marion Butchard, here with Mum Heather and Dad Ross and all her relatives and friends who've come along today to witness her baptism and to celebrate her becoming the latest member of God's family in the Lawson. Yes, folks, we're all part of God's family here, a big, happy family. So let's turn and share a greeting with those nearest to us by signing to each other, God loves you. God loves you. I'll run quickly through the intimations for this week. Our free breakfast club for school kids and carers continues every weekday morning, 8 to 8.45. Todd's Toddlers Group again meets on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings, 9.30 to 11.30. On Tuesday evening, our music group practice from 6.30 to 8.30. And the men's guild are in the, the hall from 7 to 9. Thursday, we have elevenses, our week, weekday service of worship at 11 o'clock. The lunch club open to all at 11.45 in the hall. And the men's prayer group in the church from 7.30 in the evening to completion. On Friday evening, in place of our usual fireworks evening and starting at seven o'clock, we're again having a light show here with music, hot dogs, and refreshments. And on Saturday morning, we have our monthly prayer breakfast in the hall starting at 9.30. Looking ahead and something to brighten all of us up, our music group and rising young stars are presenting all together now in the church on Friday 12th November at 7.30 and Saturday 13th November at 2 o'clock. This is an event which celebrates music theatre and features the songs of over 50 composers our music group have been preparing for and rehearsing the show for the last three months. Tickets are five pounds each from Fiona, Diane, or the church office. That's the evening of 12th November, afternoon 13th November. As you'll know, our good as new pop-up shop in the Marquee closed its doors yesterday. We owe a great debt of gratitude to Morig and our happy band of willing volunteers 
for all their hard work in setting up and staffing the shop and the raffle over the past eight weeks. To Karen, Graham and Jonathan for their constant support and all those who kindly donated gifts, stock and goods for the sale. Not forgetting the shoppers who purchased so many bargains. Our treasurer Brian tells me that with some proceeds still to come, the congregational account has received to date an amazing £8,216.86. Well done, all of you. Folks, it really is good to come together to praise the Lord. Our introit to the service this morning is, I will offer up my life. Please stand to sing. Thank you. I will offer up my life in spirit and truth, pouring up the oil of love as my worship to you. In surrender I must give my every part. Lord, receive this sacrifice of a broken heart. Jesus, what can I There was something that Ron said when he was giving the welcome this morning that is a very, very true fact, because we meet just now as God's people. However, we are more than just God's people. A people, when you think about it, could be the people of Forfar. It could be the people of Angus. But when we come together as God's people, it's something bigger and better than that, because we come together as family. And we're all different, and we all have our different likes and dislikes, but God calls us to come. And here's the other wonderful thing. God is ready and willing to adopt more and more people into his family. We don't have to sit some kind of an entrance exam. We don't have to have a certain amount of money it's nothing to do with that at all. It's everything to do with the overwhelming love of God. 
who loves us just as we are. Thing is, he quite often doesn't leave us that way. He quite often molds us and shapes us and changes us into be the people that he would have us be. Better people, kinder people, more loving people, compassionate people. We sang a song this morning just now about our grateful hearts because God is so faithful to us even though we let him down. So we're going to sing another song just now. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. Let's stand to sing. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you so much for your never-ending, your faithful love, a love that is full of grace and mercy and forgiveness. And Lord, we need your forgiveness today because we are just so not like that. We don't seem to pass that on. In fact, many times we don't even think about you at all, only ever using your name as a swear word. Forgive us, Lord, and help us while we're here today to wake up to your presence. Wake up to your presence in our very, very broken world. A world that you are ready and willing to heal if only we would let you. Forgive us, Lord. And Lord, as we come today, may we hear from your word. May you speak to our hearts. May you inhabit our praise. That we would indeed know that there is something different, that we're in the presence of the Most High God. And we ask these things in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. So to all of our youngsters, the children and youngsters today, and those who are watching at home, I wanted to say to you that you can't see her, but we've got a beautiful little girl sitting at the front here. Little Lexi. Hiya, darling. Hiya. Hello, Smiler. And she's sitting here watching intently, which is maybe an example to all the grown-ups. Yeah? And she's wondering what on earth is going on, because we've got a bit of a celebration this morning. It's for us, it's National Giving Day, but what better gift could you ever have than the gift of a child? And we're here today so that we can baptize Lexi, so she can be part of God's family. But here's the thing, that's not always what happened. And way, way back in the times of Jesus, things happened a bit differently. You had a cousin of Jesus called John the Baptist, the, the, the clue is in the name, and he used to say to folks, you've totally ignored God, you haven't been living God's way, it's time to turn your life around, that's what the word repent means. I know that the Dundonians thinks it means getting the painters and decorators in, but repent actually means to turn around and go in a different direction. And John kept saying, you've got to turn your life around. And they would go into the water. It could be a sea, it could be a river. And the idea was they would go under, it would wash away all of yesterday, and they would come up clean so that they could follow God's way. It was like a new and fresh start. And we could all do with a new and fresh start. But when Jesus himself was baptized, something happened. It said that God's spirit came down upon him. That's the same Holy Spirit that Jesus said, I'm giving it to you. You've only got to ask, I'm giving it to you. And that Holy Spirit that helped Jesus to live his life and do all the things that Jesus did that we're still talking about 2,000 years later helps us to live our ordinary everyday lives as well. And that's why we baptize people in the name of the Father, God, in the name of the Son, Jesus, and in the name of the Holy Spirit because Jesus said he would give his spirit to us as well. Now, here's the thing. That was what we called a believer's baptism. But we, Lexi, doesn't know anything about that. She doesn't know anything about living God's way and being one of God's people. So why on earth would we baptize a baby? Well, the scriptures tell us that the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for everyone, for you and your children and your children's children and those who are far off. It's one of the promises that God makes to us. And beyond that, think about it when you've just had a child. Any new parent wants the best for their child. We do things to protect them physically, I'm a mum, and that was one of the things I hated, was having to take my child to get their jabs. You know, because you knew what was coming. They didn't. They would be quite happy playing with toys in a doctor's surgery without realising what was coming next. And I don't know about you. I'm seeing one or two mums nodding, but I used to feel, oh, what? And my wee boy sitting here used to sometimes sleep right through after me feeling sick all morning. We want the best for them. So if we really, really want the best for them, we really want God in their life right from the start. We really want them getting that direction of the Holy Spirit to stop them falling down the pitfalls and the holes that life puts in front of us. So today what we're going to do is we're going to get her parents, Lexi's parents, to make promises on Lexi's behalf. And I'm going to get them to come up just now, bring Lexi, you can come up as well if you want, come and stand with her, with them, keep her company, come up here. Sorry, you're going to get to see what I see now, okay? So if you want to come, bring Lexi up. A 
and we'll swap over. Now, because I'm coming down there, I've got to put my mask on. And I was just saying earlier, masks and, and mics don't very, go very well together. <clears throat> there we are. So, Mum and Dad, in presenting Lexi for baptism and desiring that she is grafted into Christ as a member of his body, the church, do you believe in the Christian faith that we profess? And do you promise, depending on the grace of God, to teach Lexi the truths and duties of the Christian faith and by prayer and example, bring her up in the life and worship of the church? Okay, so as I said before, this is a family affair. It involves all of us because all of us as God's family need to look out for this little soul. We need to do the best that we can to make sure that she can live her life close, close to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if we're going to do that, it's often a good idea for us to recommit ourselves to doing that task as well. So I'm going to ask if, to, to show that you're, you're happy to do that, that you would stand while I pray for the baby. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for Lexi this morning. What a beautiful little girl and what a fantastic gift for any family, including this church family. Lord, we pray for her. We pray that she would grow up not just knowing about you, but she would grow close enough that she would actually know you and recognize your hand at work in her life. Lord, we pray for her family, for mum and dad and for all of her wider family, that you would give them the love and the patience that they are going to need, that this little one would know that loving relationship as family, that she would know the difference between right and wrong, that she would be gently coaxed to live her life closer to you. Lord, we ask that you would keep your hand upon her by the power of your spirit every day of her life. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would come upon this water now, this water that we put aside for a special use and purpose, that as she is baptized this morning, that you would put your own sign and seal on her as one of your children. And she would grow closer to you every day of her life. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I'm going to ask you to very carefully come down here beside me. You may all be seated because you'll see better. Now, very carefully down the steps. The trouble with masks is that we don't always see that well. Hello. How are you doing? You can't even see me smiling, darling. You have done so well. Do you want to see what's over here? Do you want to see you coming? You coming to say hi? Usually the mic's the big attraction. Let's have a look and see. Hello. How are you doing? There's mum and dad, look. Lexi, you have no clue what is going on this morning. Yeah, look at all that. Look at those funny faces. But my darling, it was for you that Jesus came. It was for you that you lived and died so that you could grow up living your life close to God and you could say, I love God because he first loved me. So now, Lexi, Andrina, Marion, Butcher, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May you know his presence in your life and his hand upon you and blessing. And we're going to sing a wee blessing to you right now. Oh, it's getting that kind of stage. It's time to go back to mum. <clears throat>
Now, we're going to take a wee walk up down the aisle just to show you off to everybody. Okay. Look, have I got a wee smile? A wee smile? Come on. Let's have a wee walk up. Okay, in a few moments, our youngsters will be able to go through to the hall in this creche. So we, Lexi, can go through there as well. Where they, that means that parents can go. And any of the youngsters can go through. Any of the children can go through, through to the hall. And we'll catch up with them later. Now, if you've got a youngster and they've never been through before and you think, oh, you know, not quite sure how they'll be, of course a mum or a dad can go through. There's not room for everybody. So a mum or a dad can go through and keep them company just now. But it'll mean that they can have some fun through there until we are finished in here. But first of all, we're going to sing a song. And it's an action song. So all of you youngsters up out there that are brave enough, you're going to come out and give me a hand. Because just like mics aren't good with masks, and neither are they good when I'm jumping up and down. And get, I'm going to get Chloe up here as well. Okay. So, um, the actions are kind of what it says on the tin. Any grown-ups, if you want to take part, because we are going to stand and sing, any grown-ups who want to take part, you can go into the aisle, because it's kind of hard jumping up and down and touching the ground in a pew. But you are very, very welcome to take part. If not, just join in with the singing. I'm just going to um, hit the music once we get up there. <clears throat> okay, so we're just... If you follow the words, honestly, you can't go wrong. And for those of you who can't read, watch Chloe and myself. I'll give it my best shot with trying not to let my mic fall out of my pocket. But I'm just going to put the music on for us.
Any other youngsters that want might to go through as well? Okay, we're going to turn to God's Word now. It's uh, the second letter that Paul, now Paul was a follower of Jesus, and he sends the letter, he's been starting little, what you could call, we call them churches, they would have probably started as kind of more like of a house group, or a group of people that developed into churches all over what we would call the, the Mediterranean Basin. He's, he's been out there, he's doing really well getting these little churches going, But he would stay for a wee while, get it going, and then he'd move on somewhere else. And quite often he would write back to, and they would write to him, so that they had questions to be answered, or maybe he was hearing good things about what was happening, or maybe he was hearing not so good things about what was happening. And we have two letters that he sent to the church in Corinth, and this is a little tiny snippet from the second letter that he sent to them. And he said, remember that the person who sows few seeds will have a small crop. The one who sows many seeds will have a large crop. You should each give then as you decide, not with regret or out of a sense of duty. For God loves the one who gives gladly. And God is able to give you more than you need so that you will always have all you need for yourselves and more than enough for every good cause. As the scripture says, he gives generously to the needy. His kindness lasts forever. And God who supplies seeds to sow and bread to eat will also supply you with all the seed you need and will make it grow and produce a rich harvest for your generosity. He will always make you rich enough to be generous at all times, so that many will thank God for your gifts which they receive from us. For this service you perform not only meets the needs of God's people, but also produces an outpouring of gratitude to God. And because of the proof which this service of yours brings, Many will give glory to God for your loyalty to the gospel of Christ, which you profess, and your generosity in sharing them and every, with them and everyone else. And so with deep affection, they will pray for you because of the extraordinary grace God has shown you. Let us thank God for his priceless gift. Amen. Let us bow before the Lord right now as we bring before him our prayers for others. Let us pray. Loving God, as we come before you today, we are aware that there are many world leaders and or their representatives meeting in Glasgow to discuss the important issue of this wonderful planet that you have given to us. Lord, we ask that you would give them wisdom, not their own wisdom, your wisdom. We ask, Lord, that the same Spirit, your Holy Spirit, that hovered at the time of creation would be hovering over that place the whole time that these discussions take place, that our world may be a better place to live. And Lord, we pray for those who are living right on the rough edge. Those whose homes have been washed away through flooding. Those who scrat about in rubbish heaps looking for leftovers to eat. 
those who are sick from illnesses that we can easily be vaccinated against where we live. So, Lord, we do indeed pray for our world. We pray for your love and your mercy and compassion to, be, to flow so freely. We pray, too, for our own country. We pray for our own communities, families, friends. For life can be very hard. We pray for those who are sick, that you would bring healing. We pray, Lord, for those who are troubled. We ask that you would bring a peace into their lives, that you would open doors, that they would know your presence. We pray, Lord, for those who have lost loved ones and find an emptiness when they wake in the morning and pray that you would fill it with your love and compassion and comfort that only you can bring. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to restore this world to what you would have it be. Forgive us that as your stewards we have let you down and we have let one another down. And we pray that your spirit would lead us and guide us, that we could make a difference, that this place would be a better place to live. Lord, we make these prayers in Jesus' name, for we know that you hear us, we know that you care, and we know that you answer our prayers. Amen. We're going to stand and sing once more, Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Light for the world to see. Christ, be our light. Shine. Shining. 
seated. <clears throat> Some of you will remember a particular film that came out in the early 70s. Others will have probably heard it since then. I'm just going to give you a little reminder of a particular song. Is that the one? No, it's not the one. Sorry, I've got the wrong one there. That's this one. That's it. Do you remember them doing this? off there. <laughs> Do you remember that one? If you think for one minute that money doesn't play a big role in our world, do not, do not think that everything that's discussed at this conference in Glasgow will not touch on money. None of us are that naive. And whilst Every nation in the world knows what is needed so that we can not only have a better life today, but that those that come in the future can sustain a better life. A lot of it will come down to pounds and P. And I guess that that means that there's a bit of a wrong priority somewhere in our world, which has built up over generation after generation after generation. When profit comes before people, there is something far wrong. And it's why I need to ask all of you to continue to pray about this so that the right priorities will be considered and we might have a chance of having some good outcomes. But you need to understand that when the Apostle Paul talks about the giving, and you, you heard it quite clearly there, that he's actually looking at it in a completely different perspective. He's actually looking at a way of life, but also a way of life for God's people, where their priorities are right, where God's love and grace and generosity and compassion will flow not just to us, but that we allow it to flow then on to other people. And you need to understand that whenever Paul talks about anything, and whenever he talks about how God's people should be, he bases it a lot on the Scriptures. Now, I'm not talking about the Bibles that we read from today, because half of that wasn't written then. He bases it on the old Scriptures that they had. And he bases what he says in this little passage on three in particular. There's this one that says, for God loves the one who gives gladly. You've all heard that saying, God loves a cheerful giver. And probably we wonder where that came from. You haven't. Where have you been? I tell you, it's because we didn't get into the schools as much as we used to. There was a saying, God loves a cheerful giver. That came from an old proverb in the Old Testament, Proverbs 2, verse 9. But here's the thing. If you were to pick up a Bible today and look that up, it wouldn't say that. And something that we need to understand is that before the Romans were in what we would call the Holy Land, in Jerusalem, in Palestine, all of that area, before the Roman Empire took over, the Greeks were there. So the scriptures that they had were often read and written in Greek. And if you were to look at the Greek version of the Old Testament scriptures, 
it would have that little bit that we would translate as God loves a cheerful giver. However, our Bibles are translated from Hebrew, and for some reason, that little bit isn't there. But the whole of that passage that Paul is talking about, and this one here, Paul is talking about the way that we are with one another. He's talking about the way that God's people should be with one another, looking out for one another. He's talking about an attitude that becomes a heart attitude and a way of life. So that instead of every pound being a prisoner, we can be looking out for those round about. I always remember when I first came to Forfar, I went to visit someone. It was a, a gentleman who's, I'd just done his wife's funeral. And he was a wee bit lost, it has to be said. So I'd gone back to see if he was okay. And I was sitting there chatting to him. I was coming towards lunchtime. And all of a sudden, there was a chap at the door and the next door neighbor came in. I actually knew her. She was a member of the church here. I didn't know that, that he was her neighbor, but she came in and she had a tray. And she says, I've got your dinner ready for you. She says, you're going to have to keep your strength up. And she had a soup and she had a main course. Bless her heart, this was a little old pensioner that didn't have an awful lot, but she was looking out for her neighbor. She was looking out for the one next door. And the Apostle Paul is trying to encourage us to have that kind of heart when it comes to giving. Because that's how God would have us be, and that's how God would have us live. And when Paul talks about the God who would give us seeds. Yes, we think about the very, very practical thing, and there is that side of it, the, the things that can grow food. There's the very, very practical side, but there's another side. You see, God's people are meant to encourage others to live God's way as well, because it's a better way. It's a more caring way. It's a more compassionate way. And these are seeds that we too can sow. And the other little passage that he mentions is found in Isaiah, where Isaiah talks of a time when God will renew everything and invite everyone to feast from his table, where the harvest will be bountiful. A time where all can come. And this little passage comes after Isaiah has already spoken about someone else who was coming, God's servant, the Lord Jesus Christ, who would come and try to set the world right, to redress the balance, to care more for others than he did about himself, to allow that love to flow, yes, even to death on a cross and beyond. That's the kind of giving that God will give. To give everything of himself and beyond. And what the Apostle Paul is suggesting is that as we start to kind of live that way, it becomes a way of life. That those who look out for everybody else are blessed. Oh, they may never ever be rich. One of those little passages, if you look back to it, tells us far better to have a good name as God's people than to look to be rich. You might never ever have a, a, a mansion house here, but you'd certainly have enough for your own needs and to help those round about. And more than that, you'll be living a full, happy, blessed life. So we need to understand that when we talk about today being our National Giving Day, we're not just talking about keeping the heat and the light on, although it is nice to be nice and cosy this morning, and it is nice to be able to look out and see you all. But that's not really what this is about. It's because here, 
as God's family, we like to play our part in building God's kingdom the way that it was meant to be, the way that Jesus told us it was meant to be, and the way that the Apostle Paul is encouraging us to continue doing. And those of you who are here know already about all of the many, many things that we do. But there are others that don't know that we run a food project and we are taking food parcels out. In fact, during lockdown, our little food project that used to give out about 30 to 40 parcels a week was having to give out 250 food parcels every week. And every day of the week, we were going out to people's homes. And we're still giving about 100 a week, still to this day. And that takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of commitment. And yes, it does take a bit of finance as well. We never ever count the cost of the petrol that people use as they're running all over Forfar and beyond with these kind of things. Because people with willing hearts have said, yes, I'll do that. I'll do that. When we have our light night on Friday, we had it last year for the very, very first time because we couldn't really have a firework display and invite people to come. So we did a, a, a sound and light display here. This year we'll be able to have hot dogs and what have you in the marquee outside. There will be no charge for that. So that people that have got children who couldn't afford to be paying to go to these big events can come along and have some fun. Oh yeah, we'll have donation buckets around so that people who can afford to help us to offlay the cost can make a donation if they want to. We try to do everything that we possibly can, including the breakfast club before school, where we give out free breakfasts to the children and their parents or carers, whoever comes along with them as they go to school to make sure that they're set up for the day. And yes, we get some of the food donated, but yes, we have to buy some of it. And yes, we have to have the heating on. It's pretty cold at half past seven in the morning now. But this isn't about trying to count the cost. It's trying to do more to serve people. Because that little passage that Paul was talking about talks about everyone coming. It's not saying, oh, you're a church member so you can come. It's talking about everyone coming. And that little verse there, for this service that you perform not only meets the needs of the people, but it also produces an outpouring of gratitude to God. See, we're not just doing this because, well, you know, uh, the, the government say that we should be looking out for them. We are doing this because of who we are as God's people. It's not a duty. If it was a duty to get up at six o'clock in the morning and get your shower and be over here for half past seven so that you could make breakfast for the people, you wouldn't last long. It's not a duty. You do it because, as God's people, it's what we should be doing, and it's what we want to do. It's who we are. On this National Giving Day, the reason that this was so important to us is because Church of Scotland said that the money that we get today, we can spend locally. It doesn't have to go off to mission or what have you. We can use it for our own purposes, not something that's decided on by somebody else. And we have had people that have been fundraising for this, and Ron mentioned them earlier. There have been people out doing things in that marquee in weather that my dog would not go out in, and yet they've been there. God bless them. Thank you so, so much. There have been others that I know have been putting money aside just so that they could do something for today. Our youngsters in the youth club did a fundraiser. They did a sponsored bounce. Yeah, I know. You had to see it to believe it. But in that one evening, those youngsters, 70 to 80 of them, raised over 2,000 pounds so that we can continue to do the things that we need to do as God's people. Why do we do it? 
because we want more and more people to be touched by the love of God. We want more and more people to be able to live life the way that we live life. We want more and more people to know the hope that we have for today and forever because of Jesus. And if you haven't heard about that, then you need to come back and hear about the hope that we have for now and forever because of the love of Jesus. We are grateful for every penny that is given. We are grateful for every person that comes. We are grateful for every person who helps and gives of their time, and that's past, present, and future. We are grateful for every member of God's family playing their part. But we are grateful for God's love that loves us so much it would go to death and beyond. That's what this is about. Sowing those seeds of God's love in the hearts of our community so that they could draw close to God and move into a different life, a better life, a life where there is hope for now and forever. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you for you outgive all of us You bless us and bless us and bless us. You have provided for us for generation after generation through this wonderful, wonderful world. May we have that same generosity. May our lives show the same grace and generosity that you show. And may we forever have that gratitude to you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we take a moment just now as we bring our offering forward. Let us say thanks to God for the giving. Lord, we thank you for your many gifts and we thank you too for the gifts that have been given today. We ask that you would bless them and you would guide us to show us how to use those gifts wisely so that we can bless the lives of others. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, just very quickly before we go to our, for our cuppy and before we go into our last hymn, remember Friday night... Friday night starts at 7 o'clock. There will be lots of youngsters here. Young and old are welcome to come. So it's not a case of parents just dropping off kids. They can stay for a cuppy as well. We'll have refreshments in the marquee. It will be noisy, okay, because we will have music. I was going to say playing loudly. I probably should have said blaring loudly. It will be noisy. I remember last year getting a a text from somebody that was giggling their head off because they lived in King's Muir and they said, hearing you loud and clear. So it will be noisy. You will probably be able to see us from King's Muir as well because the whole thing will be lit up. There will be hot dogs. There will be refreshment. There will be fun going on outside. That'll probably be from about 7 o'clock to about 8 o'clock. I also need, if you live in the area, if you would be happy to hand out some leaflets for me. Um, We need to let people locally know not just what's on, and of course they're they're welcome to come along, but also to say, sorry for the noise, it will not be that long. And at least it won't be something that will frighten all of their pets as well. So we are very, very aware of that. So busy night, Friday night. Also remember that the following Friday we do have the concert in the church 
I'm quite looking forward to it. I've been seeing them. There was one night that they, in this, just at the end of the summer, that they had a little rehearsal outside because it was such a lovely evening. And people over the road were saying how much they really, really enjoyed it. Now, that was at the beginning of the rehearsals. They'll be better than that now. So I encourage you to, to grab a ticket, come along either on the Friday night or on the Saturday afternoon. But just for now, let us give thanks to God as we close. We're going to sing a brilliant old hymn. And don't forget tea and coffee in the hall after. Let's stand and sing. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen.